As you know, in the last couple of weeks, we've been uh, talking about waging war, and Rick's done a great job in, in setting that up and preaching and helping us to uh, understand that, that we are in a war. And I hope that you've been reminded, just as I've been reminded, that we have a real enemy in Satan and that we can't just sit back, that we have to engage. So we are going to continue uh, that series today. Rick talked last week about making battle plans, and we're going to talk today about battle preparation. And uh, we're going to do uh, the first lesson in this little mini-series here about battle preparation, um, and uh, we're going to do this out of Ephesians chapter 6. So you actually can be turning there if you would like. In this section of Ephesians chapter 6, it can be broken down into three sections, actually. And today, we're actually going to be just looking at the first section of this. I know this is a very familiar passage to us. And um, as we look at this, hopefully you'll be reminded of some things that you may have just put aside. And now it's time to really rethink and pick those things back up. But in Ephesians chapter 6, starting in verse 10, Says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything, to stand. The title of the sermon this morning is Be Strong in the Lord. Be Strong in the Lord. And I want to give you three things from this passage that I believe will help us to be strong in the Lord that this passage teaches us and tells us about. The first one is very simple. Be strong. That's what this passage tells us. Be strong. This isn't the only passage that tells us to be strong. We actually see it throughout the scriptures. I want you to turn with me to Joshua, chapter 1. This is a passage that I really, really love in Joshua, chapter 1. Starting in verse 1. It says, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. I love how blunt God is. <laughs> he, 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 didn't, <laughs> he didn't waste. He just said, Moses is dead, son. All right? <laughs> now, now listen. He says, now then, you and all these people get ready to go and cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give to them, to the Israelites. He says, I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country, to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Then he says, be strong and courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate it on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord, your God, will be with you wherever you go. This passage fires me up. Then in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, Paul also gives us some encouragement about being strong. 1 Corinthians chapter 16. We're going to read 
verse 13. As soon as I can get there, that page is sticking together. But it says in verse 13, it says, be on your guard, stand firm in the faith. Be courageous. Be strong. So over and over we get to see in the scriptures that God commands us to be strong. Now, real strength isn't a matter of mere muscle power. Real strength isn't a matter of brute force. Real strength is not determined by how much weight you can lift. See, real strength isn't even about just gutting it out. See, real strength, it's a matter of heart. It's a matter of faith. It's a matter of trusting in God. See, with real strength comes character. It comes will. It comes perseverance and determination. See, that's what comes from real strength. And when we have that real strength, we can be strong as God commands us to. But the most important thing that we have to remember about being strong, as Paul reminds us here in Ephesians, he says it's about being strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. See, it's not about our power. There is not enough human power that exists for us to be strong in the way that God calls us to be strong. It's about being strong in his power. Now, look in Ephesians chapter one, because Paul helps us to understand what that power is all about. Ephesians chapter one. Starting in verse 18. He says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the age to come. Paul says that power that we have at our disposal is the same power that was exerted to raise Jesus from the dead and to seat him in the heavenly realms with God. That power, Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, is able to demolish strongholds. See, it's a divine power. It's not a human power. It's a divine power. Again, there's no human power that can demolish the strongholds that are fighting against us. It's that divine power that we have to have in order to be strong. You see, it's the power of God. And with that power of God, there are some things that we have at our disposal. We've got prayer. We've got the word of God. We've got the Holy Spirit. And part of that power that we have and another weapon that we have to use to help us to be strong, I think we take for granted. The world has even tried to to just push it aside and say we don't no longer need it. And that is the body of Christ, the church. There's power in that that God has given us that we need to tap into more that we need to understand more. You see, there's strength in numbers. There's strength in being together. That's why God gave us the church, so that we could help one another, so that we could be there for one another. We can't push it aside. We need the body of Christ. I know I need you right now today. (laughs) It'd be so good to have you sitting in here. (laughs) It would make what I'm doing right now so much easier. See, we need the body of Christ, especially during this pandemic. 
it can be so easy to feel isolated. It can be so easy to feel like I'm just by myself. I don't really get to go out much because I'm not really healthy as the way I need to be. I'm fearful about this, this disease and this virus, and you can easily be isolated. God doesn't want us to be isolated. That's why we need the church. You know, I, I'm so glad that when I am weak at times, that I've got strong brothers who are in my life who can help me be strong. You know, it was an interesting thing that happened just the other night. For some odd reason, my phone sent an SOS emergency message to Rick Fuller about 11.15 at night. I didn't know it had sent it. Come to find out, it sent two messages like that to him. So Rick texted me, and then he actually called me. And I was like, looked at my phone, I said, why is Rick calling me? So I answered the phone, and he said, is everything okay? I was like, uh, yeah, everything's fine. He's like, I just got an SOS emergency message from you. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> um, not sure why that happened, but everything's good. He said, okay, <laughs> good night. <laughs> Talk to you later. So I hung up the phone. But what it reminded me of is I've got someone in my life who cares about me when I'm in trouble. And even if I'm not in trouble, for a brother to call me almost 1130 at night to make sure I was okay, that gave me such assurance. I was like, hey, man, I'm glad I've got brothers in my life. When I may be weak, I got strong brothers who can help me to be strong. So, so let me ask you, who's in the trenches with you? Who do you have in your life who's there for you when you are weak? Who can you pick up the phone and call and know they'll be there for me? I know this brother or this sister, they're going to be there for me. There are many times I've called Ron Cox early in the morning because I needed somebody to talk to, needed somebody to pray with. And Ron Cox is there because he gets up early in the morning. We need to be strong. And we've got to use the power that God puts at our disposal in order to be strong. So let's be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Let's look back over in Ephesians chapter 6, because there's another thing that this tells us that we need in order to be strong in the Lord. Ephesians 6 and verse 11 says, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. You see, the second thing we need in order to be strong in the Lord is we have to wear the armor of God. See, the Bible doesn't tell us just to put on any kind of armor. It says put on the full armor of God. See, it's God's armor that we have to wear. Again, we don't have a human armor that we can wear to fight against the enemy that's attacking us. We've got to put on the full armor of God. You see that, that phrase there, full armor? It's the Greek word panoplia. There's a song that we often sing, soldiers of Christ arise. And in the third verse of that song, there's a phrase that we sing says, but take to arm you for the fight, the panoply of God. Now, you may or may not have ever realized what you were singing when you were singing that song, but that song is all about putting on the full armor of God. See, again, it's God's armor that we have to put on, not just any old armor that we want, but God's armor. You see, God has designed an armor that is perfectly fitted for us as disciples of Jesus. 
I'm reminded of when I was a really little boy. When it was really cold outside, my mom would grab our big coats. She'd wrap us in those big coats. She'd put our gloves on. And then she'd put something on me that I absolutely hated. And that was a toboggan. I couldn't stand wearing a toboggan. I didn't like it on my head. And she would put that thing on my head and pull it down over my ears because she wanted to protect me from the cold. She knew this would help keep my head warm, but I hated that toboggan. And as soon as I went out the door and I got on the bus, I pulled that toboggan off. <laughs> I always carried a comb in my pocket. The reason I didn't like that toboggan is because it would mess up my hair. So I'd carry my comb in my pocket, I'd comb my hair. And then when I came back home, I'd make sure I had that toboggan back on. <laughs> See, my mom was just trying to protect me from the cold. She knew that this toboggan, that coat, those gloves would help me. It was what she was putting on me to help me to be safe. You see, God, he does the same thing from a spiritual standpoint. He has armor that he has created that he wants us to put on. He wants us to put it on because he knows it's the only thing that's going to be effective in helping us against this enemy that we're facing. There isn't a human armor that we can put on that's going to do that for us. We've got to be wearing God's armor. You see, look at what it says in verse 12. It says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Let me read that one more time. It says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood. See, we know how to fight each other. We know all about how to get on each other's nerves. We know all about how to push each other's buttons. We know how to argue and battle with one another. But God tells us that's not where our struggle is. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood. So we need to put that out of our mind and really understand what the real struggle is, who the real fight is with. Listen to who he says that real fight is with. He says, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. See, we don't have anything human that we can use to fight against this. We got to use God's armor. And we can't pick and choose that armor that we want from God's armor. I want this piece, but I don't really want that piece. Well, I'll take a little bit of that piece, but I don't want... No, 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 no. He says you have to put on the full armor. That's the way you're going to be able to stand against this enemy. You've got to put on the full armor of God. We have to wear it, whether you like it or not, because it is going to help you stand against those evil forces that are out there. Lastly, we've got to stand firm. In order for us to be strong in the Lord, we have to stand firm. Four times in verses 11 through 14, we see that word stand. It says stand, take your stand in verse 11. It says stand your ground in verse 13, and it also just says stand in verse 13. And in verse 14, it says stand firm then. See, we've got to stand firm. Now, standing firm is not about waiting around to see what's going to happen. Standing firm is not about being passive. See, standing firm has a whole new meaning. If you think about someone who takes martial arts, they have a ready stance. I don't do martial arts, so I don't know what that, but, but they, they have a ready stance. That means they're ready for whatever's coming against them. See, when you stand firm, it means you set yourself against something. 
It means that you resist, you oppose. It means that you make firm, that your ground that you're standing on, your stand, it is firm. It means that you stand immovable. To stand firm is to uphold or sustain the authority or force of anything. See, we have to stand firm. I want you to listen to these verses that the Bible gives us about standing firm. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58, it says, Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. In Philippians 1 Verses 27 and 28, it says, Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. He says, Then whether I come and see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in the one spirit, striving together as one for the faith of the gospel, without being frightened in any way by those who oppose you. This is a sign to them that they will be destroyed, but that you will be saved, and that by God. In Proverbs chapter 10, verse 25, it says, When the storm has swept by, the wicked are gone, but the righteous stand firm forever. And then in 1 Peter chapter 5, in verse 8, it says, Be alert. And of sober mind, your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. You see, the Bible, over and over, it tells us to stand firm. We can't be passive. We can't just sit around waiting for something to happen. We have to be immovable. We've got to stand firm. We've got to have a steadfast mind that we are going to stand for what God stands for. You see, we got to stand firm in the truth. We've got to stand firm in unity and humility. We've got to stand firm in our faith. We've got to stand firm till the end. The enemy wants to do everything that he can to destroy us. He wants to do everything that he can to rip us apart. He wants to do everything he can to divide us. He wants to do everything that he can to make God's word meaningless, to make the church meaningless. But we can't allow that to happen. We've got to be strong in the Lord. We've got to be strong in his mighty power. We have to put on the armor of God, the full armor of God. And we've got to make a decision that we're going to stand firm. No matter what you're dealing with, no matter what's going on right now in your life, God has given us everything that we need to be strong in the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for providing for us that armor. God, I pray that you will continue to remind us over and over again that it's your armor that we have to wear in order to be able to stand against this enemy, Satan. God, we want to be strong in your mighty power. Help us to use the power that you've put at our disposal. Help us to not waver from the truth of your word. 
Help us not to shrink back when the world wants so much to tell us that we don't need you and that we don't need your word and that we don't need the church. God, we desperately need all of those things. And without them, we can't make it. Father, I pray that we will work to be united, that we will work to be together. Father, that we will not allow what's happening around us with the pandemic to push us to isolation, that we will push harder to be together, that we will do whatever we need to do to stay connected. Father, I love to have those brothers around me when I'm weak, who are there to lift me up, who are there to help me to be strong. God, thank you so much for all that you give us. And we pray that you continue to help us to be strong. We love you and we thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, we look forward to seeing you next week where we'll continue and we'll talk more practically about this full armor of God. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday.